All right. Hello, everybody. Uh, I hope you're doing well. I hope your day is going well. Uh, thank you for coming to my talk. So today we're going to talk about Selenium in the clouds, Q Glissanjo on the harp. Uh, so using cloud service providers with the Selenium web driver. So, uh oh. So your speaker today. So hello everybody. It is I am Josh Grant. Uh, here's a lovely photo of me in my natural habitat of uh, Toronto, Ontario. Um, I've been working in test automation. Oh, try this. Uh, I've been working in test automation for uh, since 2010, so that's 13 years. Um, I've been up and down the test automation pyramid. My first job was writing UI automation for Windows applications, Windows desktop applications. Oh. Of course. And uh, that was a long time ago using Silk Test, um, blew my mind at the time. Uh, and so since then, I've worked with uh, writing Selenium tests in Java and JavaScript with Protractor, the ill fated Pro Protractor. Um, I've written API frameworks um, using Python and requests. That was a really fun project. Um, and my, my latest gig is uh, working with Code Intelligence. Uh, so we make uh, securing your application as easy as writing a unit test. So I'm kind of going to the very bottom of the test automation pyramid. Uh, and here's my information. You can find my website. Um, I'm active on Twitter and Instagram, I guess. Um, huge proponent of Selenium and, and automation. So that's the shtick I got to say. So what's all this? What's all this then? So everything is moving to the cloud, right? Infrastructure is moving to the cloud. Governments are using cloud. Banks are using cloud. It's amazing. So why not move your Selenium tests to the cloud? Why keep them all on your on-prem things? Well, you could do that. I've, I've done that. It's fine. You could do that. So moving to the cloud, you could use a service like one of these. You could use one of these fine providers. These are kind of the main ones. Um, there are other ones as well, and I will point out, this is not an ad. So yes, um, I previously have worked as a solution architect at Sauce Labs. Um, I primarily worked with enterprise uh, com companies, so companies you've heard of. Uh, so that's kind of most of my experience. Um, but this talk is not a vendor pitch. Use these vendors, don't use these vendors. There are probably other vendors out there. AWS probably has a thing you could use, or Azure has a thing you can use. I don't know about those things. I don't have an opinion on those things. But if you're going to use a cloud service provider similar or like these services, uh, this talk is for you. All right, so, so using a cloud service provider can be very beneficial, right? It can uh, save you a lot of time and effort, setting up infrastructure, maintaining that infrastructure. Um, in some organizations, it's, there's a preference of buying things over building things. Cloud service providers are for you. Um, and Selenium makes it very easy, or like the Selenium web driver and kind of the Selenium architecture does make it relatively easy to point local tests to um, grids or to uh, using the remote web driver to something like a cloud service, right? It's built right into the product. It's built right into Selenium. So, so the lift is technically easy, um, straightforward conceptually anyway, um, but there are some differences. It's not just a simple like instead of pointing here, point there and everything is magic. Uh, there are some important differences. Uh, these aren't bad things. These are just things you might want to think of. Um, and I'm going to use the reference point of going from running things locally on a single machine, like your local laptop or your local workstation, um, and moving to a cloud service provider. So I'm going to walk through the main three areas that you should think of or that have significant changes. So this includes starting a new session. How do you connect to a new browser, a new session? Uh, what happens when you ex uh, actually execute your tests, um, like just going through like step by step or running tests? And, and closing your session, ending your session, very important. Uh, so this talk will primarily focus on Selenium, but there could be some mobile things in there uh, with Appium. If you want to learn about those newfangled J JS things, none of this applies, or like almost none of it applies. So, okay. And if you prefer a visual or a metaphor, we all like metaphors. We all like thinking. Um, I like thinking anyway. Maybe not everyone does. <laughs> um, Imagine moving from local tests or like uh, local web driver instances to like uh, consider those as using uh, a local 
or using your um, gardening hose connected to your house. And if you need something more, instead of using your garden hose to water your plants, water your garden, you're gonna move to like this industrial pipeline, right? That's kind of the metaphor. So the industrial pipeline kind of is your cloud service provider uh, and the, the local garden hose is what you would have with your local. So it's kind of moving from this local hose to all these pipes that come from somewhere else. And so we'll walk through this. So let's keep it easy peasy. So starting a session. So what's the, what's the very first thing you do? What's the first thing your test is gonna do probably is open a browser. You're gonna start a browser session up. Uh, you're gonna connect to a browser, maybe visit a website, but like you're gonna connect to the browser. That's the very first thing you're gonna do. So one of the first things, if you're going to use a cloud service provider or try out using a cloud service provider, is to connect to a session. Like how do I connect to you know, source labs? How do I connect to browser pile, right? How do I connect to these things? Um, so there, there are two cases that you might want to replicate or two cases you're probably thinking of when you're connecting to a cloud service. So one is you wanna start a cloud service session that has the same configuration as your local. So you wanna use, like if I'm using the latest Chrome, I wanna replicate that on the cloud service. Uh, the other case is where you want to create a different session. So a cloud service will provide you new opportunities to try different browsers, different browser operating system combinations. So you might wanna try a configuration that you haven't seen before, you haven't used before. And this second one is kind of the, the, one of the main reasons. This is like one of the big deal things when you go to a cloud service, right? It's, if you could just run everything locally and just use whatever Chrome version you have, you probably wouldn't need any service. You could just run everything on your laptop or run everything on one of your EC2 instances or something in your company. Um, but opening up to all these different uh, other combinations of platforms, that's like one of the main reasons you would use a cloud service provider. It's a big benefit. Um, and you might have good reason to do this. You might have good reason to do this in your context. Um, you might have to support all these different browser platforms officially. Um, you might have you know, significant market share. Uh, earlier I was talking to people about accessibility. Um, you, know, you might have users that um, use all sorts of different browsers and you have to test against all those different browsers, right? You have to care about that thing. So that's one reason why you'd use a cloud service. So that's one reason why you would do that. Um, so some examples, uh, so running Mac versus Windows versus Linux, um, even at the same time. So now you can like just you know, change a string and you're running against Mac OS or Safari on Mac OS versus Chrome on Windows versus Firefox on Linux, and you can compare those things, so that's really good. Uh, using older browser versions. So I've had this experience where you, you, you test on the latest Chrome and then you realize, oh wait, we have a regression or something happened we should really test on like the previous version. Um, that's, that's difficult to do. That's difficult to go back. Even on local grids, it's difficult to go back like a version of Chrome. Um, uh, Google is, is very clever about just rolling out those automatic updates. Um, it's very difficult to get older versions of Chrome arbitrarily. So, but a cloud service, no problem. You want like Chrome 80, you got it. You want Chrome 82, I don't know about that. Um, so using older browser versions is a big, is a big plus, but also uh, using the latest and greatest versions. So is the next version of Chrome, is it gonna be like, I don't know where we're at, like 114, 115? Uh, what if you skip a version, that happens. Um, you know, what? Ah, I know what happened. For a second I thought the power went out, then I saw the lights were still on, and I got very confused. Um, Anyway, so anyway, starting a session. So like, this is, this is the big deal reason. This is why you would do this, so you have access to this stuff. So, so how do you do this? Let's learn together, because this is both very simple and very complicated. Like it's conceptually very simple, but it can get complicated um, kind of in your implementation. So here's local case, easy, breezy, lemon, squeezy, new web driver. So I'm good, these examples are gonna be in Java, because I'm such a nice guy. Um, so here's how you'd start a new session locally. Uh, so new Chrome driver, you can replace that with your Firefox driver. Assume you have all your, um, yeah, uh, what are they called? 
like the browser driver, like in installables, like uh, those are all good to go. This is it. So from a code perspective, one line, no problem, right? Easy peasy. You could you could pass in different configurations and uh, different profiles or like pass in command line args, but this is this is the easiest case. So I'm just going to walk through the easy case. So let's say you want to move to an internal grid. So first, you probably want to use uh, in the bottom line the remote web driver, right? So that lets you connect to a remote instance. So that could be an internal grid, could be a grid running on your laptop. You could do that. Um, it could be uh, a different service, but so this is built in. So first you switch to a remote web driver, and then you have to provide an address for that grid, like where is that grid located, where is the server, and then you'd also pass in your options for the browser. So you have to specify now, you can't just say give me a Chrome browser, you have to say give me this browser version with this platform name uh, and, and the Chrome instance. So for example, if you want to switch to Firefox, you have to change um, your Chrome options to a Firefox options, uh, you have to, and you have to change your browser versions and your platform name. So this is required. Um, most, a lot of people have probably seen this, uh, but if you haven't, just you know, be aware, it's, there's a couple steps. You have to specify a few things. And then last but not least, so at the very top, we have the grid address. So if you're using an internal grid, uh, like I was all those years ago, um, it's going to look something like this. You're going to have some IP address. I've totally made this up. It just looked nice to me. I don't know. Um, so it's going to be some kind of IP address. Uh, in my experience, it's mostly just, just a numeric address. It doesn't get like a server name or service or something, but your mileage may vary. So, so you have a little more work to do. So you've added on, you have to change your remote web driver, which is fine, but you also have to use a grid address, you have to pass in an, an address and some kind of options. Okay, so like you need those two components, you have to specify those. Okay, so the cloud provider case. So cloud provider case is just like using an internal grid. It is like an internal grid in the cloud um, for standard Selenium connections. So again, our address is gonna look the same. Uh, here, here we're using, uh, like it's some sort of service, so I've just made up the service barbecue pile, delta.org, um, and it's, I'm gonna connect to this hub. And I'm gonna start with like different options, so it's exactly like using a, um, it's exactly like using a remote web driver instance. It is a remote web driver instance, it's not, it's not like it. Um, so I'm gonna specify, okay, I want Chrome, here are my Chrome options, but wait, there's more. There's a little bit more than the internal grid case. So in addition to your Chrome options, in a, uh, so like saying, um, you know, give me Chrome, I don't know, give me the latest Chrome or Chrome 104 on Windows 11, specifying your browser version, your platform name. Um, you also have to provide your provider options. So this is required with W3C and all that stuff. Um, so you have to specify additional capabilities for your cloud service, okay? You have to do this. Um, they can be empty, it can be just a, a bunch of, it can just be an empty um, dictionary or hash map, I guess, depending on your language. But you have to provide them because there could be additional configurations that only apply to that cloud provider, right? So like you could adjust your Selenium uh, version, your client version, um, there could be some fancy features that these things have, but you have to provide these things. So, so kind of you still use the remote web driver. Uh, you still provide an address. The address could be public, obviously, hopefully, <laughs> um, or not. Um, some options specifying which browser, uh, which browser combination you would like, like browser and your platform configuration, um, but also additional capabilities for your providers. So, so kind of think of it like this, um, because if you are you know, building up some, a code base and you're, you're preparing to use a cloud provider and you're responsible for this code, um, which a lot of you probably are, um, just remember you're kind of building up. So for the local case, all you need to specify is a browser, really. The internal grid is you need a browser but also an address, so some sort of something like that. And then a cloud service is the browser, the address, but you must also provide provider options. So even, even if there's just none, even if it's just like give me the latest Chrome, on, um, you know, on this plot provider. You still have to provide provider options. You have to do this. <laughs> I'm helping you by telling you this. Um, 
So here's that, okay. So kind of to go back, it's a little bit like our garden hose scenario, right? Local garden hose, it's like it's easy. You just kind of connect it up, you add it to your the tap, and you start spraying. Um, but there could be a little bit more configuration and a little bit more information that you need to get started if you're going to this industrial pipeline, right? You're gonna be bringing in you know, uh, water from some place, so there might be a little bit a more configuration up front, uh, but it has to be done. So that's kind of the, the first, and you're, getting, and you're getting benefits by doing this, right? Like you're not just connecting a standard garden hose, you're connecting up this industrial pipeline, maybe there's standards, maybe there's different gauges, I don't know, I don't know, I'm not a pipeline person. But just thinking about it. Okay, so executing tests. So you've got them configured, you're connected, you're, you're running on all your, your favorite browser configurations. Great, right, that's it. Everything should be done, right? Like, it's Selenium using, using a grid, but the grid is hosted in the cloud, and, and these companies are flawless and provide like nothing but excellent service and uptime, right? So everything should be go great, right? Right? Uh, probably. <laughs> and things mostly do go right. Like, mostly, you're just, you run your tests. They're just running on this cloud that, or they're running on this service that's now in the cloud. But there's a few things that can come up. There are a few, I don't want to say problems, but you have some things to think about. So the two big issues, the two big issues to look for, uh, one is kind of simple to think of, uh, or simple to kind of take care of. Uh, the other one is less simple to take care of. So the two big issues to think about are cloud provider features, like what cloud provider features do you have or lack compared to your local case, and latency. Oh no, ah, um, I know, I get to say this now, it's fun. Um, so, so cloud features versus internal setup. Basically you're using different infrastructure, using different machines, different VMs, different containers, um, and these are more general purpose, right? They're not just for your team, they're for many teams, right? They're a vendor that might support all sorts of crazy uh, things in, ca in crazy cases. So. You might run your tests and things mostly run no problem, like 80% everything runs and executes, but you might see some strange failures or some strange things, and this is uh, a difference of feature set. So whatever you're presenting on your, um, or sorry, whatever you're executing on your uh, local, you know, might differ a little bit. So some examples of this. Um, so different access to your host machines. Uh, maybe you have a test and you download a file and verify that file downloaded, right? Uh, cloud providers might restrict access on VMs, right? They might restrict access on, um, you know, what's, what you can download or what you can access or file access, that kind of thing. So your tests might behave weirdly. Um, you might have to make a few configuration changes. Um, another one that comes up a lot in the mobile case, this is one, lost network access for internal services. So this happens a lot. You're testing uh, a local app, or you're t testing a mobile app on some kind of local device. It's an emulator, or everything works, everything's great. You walk through your workflows. You start using cloud service, and you see these weird behaviors, and like, ugh, like you log in, and the login page, like, or the welcome page doesn't load properly, or something. And it could be that there are internal services that your app is connecting to that on a public or on a cloud service provider they do not have access to, right? It could be something deep down in the weeds of your app, but you would never know until you run your app on infrastructure that's not internal. So that's weird. And again, there's workarounds for this. This is usually not a big deal, but it's something that can happen. And it can be frustrating, because it's like, why isn't this working? Um, and it's for complicated reasons. Uh, last and certainly not least, another example is tests with multiple browsers. Um, again, if you're used to a grid, oh. if you're used to a grid, that is internal, and uh, you can run multiple browsers on the same machine or uh, their networks so they can connect to each other or something like that. Uh, maybe you have a test where you, you know, browser one logs in and does an action, and browser two logs in with a different user and validates that action. Um, you know, it might work no problem on your internal grid. Cloud providers might not, again, because you have everything virtualized, they're up in, in the cloud. Machines can't talk to each other for very, very good security reasons. 
uh, but that might affect your test configuration. Th these are generally okay. You can work around these. Worst case, you don't run them on the cloud, you run them internally on some infrastructure, but these are generally okay. They're just things that pop up and um, can cause sort of little issues. Um, but these are okay. These are, these are generally able to work around. But what about latency? Uh, AKA, why are my tests running so slow? Why are they slow? I ran this one test and locally it took a minute and on your cloud service provider it took 20 hours. What's happening? <laughs> and, um, well, let's talk about that because I talked about this a lot in my last job. So the way Selenium works, uh, so every action, if you call a find element, if you call a click, if you call a navigate to, these are all single wire calls. And so they travel through the network, right? Uh, they travel from the client to the server, uh, Selenium client to the Selenium server. Um, and so the more of these wire calls you have, if they suddenly become expensive per call uh, and take longer per call, then your test will take significantly longer. So, and this really comes down to science. It comes down to physics. Um, if you have two networks that are very far apart and you have to send a, a request from one to another, it's gonna take a lot longer than if everything's local, either on the same geographic network or the same topological network. Anyway, they're connected somehow. Um, or everything on the same laptop. Again, locally, everything runs super fast. It's all local, it's all right there. Um, but once you move to a cloud service provider, um, these physical distances can get pretty large. Um, and in some big corporate environments, uh, you get situations like the tests are running on infrastructure in uh, you know, US East, but the, the team that connects to them is in India, and then the cloud provider is in US West, and it's just, everything is very slow. Um, but it's just science, it's just distance, it's how far away you are from the data center uh, that hosts your cloud service providers, um, that's it. It's the way Selenium is built and it's the way um, you connect to things. So we're screwed. You're telling me it's always gonna be slow, right? And I mean, maybe, but hold on, hold on a minute. Um, let's go back to the garden hose. So. In your garden hose on, connected to your house, you only have this one hose that's kind of thin and only produces so much water, right? Once you go to this, to your industrial pipeline, you can trade your capacity for latency. You can just you know, ask for more water to come you know, in a bigger batch, right? And it's the same thing with a cloud service provider, yes, there's some latency because your data center is now potentially very far away and maybe you can make, you know, sort of some switch things around and change some locations of your services. Um, but you're still gonna have that physical latency or physical distance between things. So instead, like, you could just parallelize and run your tests more. Um, like, that's, that's very easy to do with cloud service providers. It's, in, in my experience anyway, it's less easy to do with, like, internal grids. Um, that's kind of changed a bit, um, you know, I. I remember working with uh, Selenium grids long before AWS was a thing. Um, that was, life was a lot harder back then. But like, my point is cloud service providers do give you options to like trade, to make this trade for capacity for latency. Um, but that latency is always gonna be there. That's the thing, right? And if that's important to you, then you should consider not using cloud service provider. Um, but it's something to think about, something to think about. So closing a session. So, Last and, last and certainly not least. <laughs> okay, so you've run your tests, you've ironed out all the things, they're running great. So how should you end your session? How should you, uh, how should you close things out, right? In your after hook, if you're in the Java JUnit world, like in your after methods, um, you call driver.quit, that's it. There is no, there is no, there's no magic. You call driver.quit in your after method. Always call driver.quit in your after method. <laughs> Please do this. I know, some people might be thinking like, why, would, why is this a slide, Josh? Of course you would do this. Why wouldn't you do this? I am telling you, I know for a fact this doesn't always happen. And pain and suffering 
arises. So in the local case, why would you not call driver quit? Why would you not have an after hook that does this? Oh, there could be a bunch of reasons, right? Like if you have an internal grid and you are reusing browser sessions, right? You only have, you know, you have to kind of cut on costs or something. You might, you know, use a reuse a browser session, uh, a browser session, and close it all at the end. Uh, you might um, have some kind of environment where you spin up and spin down containers or VMs, and you just throw them away at the end, uh, so you don't have to close the browser because the whole thing disappears. So like you don't have to, so you think, oh, I'll skip closing the browser because I'm just going to throw away this VM anyway, um, which is all fine. Those are all you know valid trade-offs and like you know can be good strategies. But if you're using a cloud provider, always call driver.quit. Don't not call driver.quit, okay? Now, why am I harping on this? Well, because this is the source of, at least in my experience, this was a source of a lot of confusion and a lot of weeping and gnashing of teeth um, for a bunch of reasons. So one is that it makes your test results confusing. So cloud providers aren't just gonna keep VMs or keep containers or things up indefinitely. Um, it's just not how it works. So eventually they have to stop their session. They have to either terminate things and throw an error or say that your test failed. But then you get these confusing test results of like, well, the test ran, I didn't see any failures. I, I watched the recording, it all worked, but I got an error or the test failed. What happened? And it's because the service provider, you know, cut off your, like it was, it was a waiting idle or was waiting for a command that never came. And so it just, you know, it just threw an error. That's confusing. If you call driver to quit, that doesn't happen. Another big thing is just wasting time and money. So if, if you're on a, um, a plan or if you have a service that costs by the minute or by the hour, if you don't call quit and your browser just sits and is just waiting there for nothing until it airs out, um, it's going to add extra time to your tests. It's, it might cost you extra money depending on your payments. Um, it's, it's just going to waste. It's a waste of your time and money. It's not worth it. And on, and, and again, again, this sounds, you know, this might be trivial for some people, but not for everybody. It's just good practice. It's a good idea, right? You don't know what's going to happen, right? Maybe tomorrow you stop using your browser service because of whatever reason, and maybe the next day you start using it again. Whatever you're doing, whether you're using an internal grid or not, this is just a good practice. Even if you're going to throw away that VM or you're going to throw away that container, um, something like this, just always close it out. It's a good practice. Um, it's very easy. Uh, good idea. So just keep doing that. So please call driver.quit. Please do that for me. So it's like, what happens if you don't? Well, I mean, think about, and this, is, this applies to internal grids as well, because if you don't call quit and something happens and then you have a browser instance or a, a VM that's just hanging and waiting for nothing, then it's like you have this water, uh, this water pipe and you kind of turned on the tap and just left it on and just left it on and on. And then before you know it, this happens. You're just, you're underwater. You know, how come this AW, how come this EC2 instance has been up, you know, for like the last 40 days? Oh, I don't know, or like something like that. You know, this is costing us like a thousand dollars. Like, oh, I guess so. Oh, I should have called driver to quit. So, there's a really good talk to be had in like just the costs and of not doing this. And yes, you, some of you are probably laughing, like, oh, I mean, how would you not do this? This is ridiculous. But uh, believe me, this is a problem. <laughs> this is a thing, so please call it. All right. All right, so in closing, cloud providers, they're good. I don't know, they're all right. Um, you, should, you should try them out or not, I don't really care. Um, <laughs> It's a, and I'll preface that with like it depends on your use case. So like for example, if if you're an organization that says um, cutting down on our our pipeline time or our build times or our test execution time, that is key number one. If you can cut off a minute, if you can cut off a few seconds, like that is the goal. That is the highest priority. Like cloud service providers, they're they're going to add that extra latency, and it's gonna it it might get complicated, right? So it might not be a good choice. It could be again, but it. That could be a consideration. Um, if, if you're an organization, 
uh, you know, if you're an organization that is more pr uh, prefers buying things over building things, right? We'll give you financial budget more than like headcount or something like this. Cloud providers are pretty good at yeah, because they're they're good service and they work out. Um, but again, these are all trade offs. These are all things you have to think of um, in your organizations, right? Or like, why would you do this? Um, so they can be good. They can be good. Um, they have fun features too. I gotta say, um, which is nice. Um, so, but please use them responsibly. Like, think about think about what you're doing. Like, you know, before you complain, like, oh, why is it so slow? Oh, this test is taking too long. I can't. Like, is it slower compared to your internal? Is do you have some sort of networking thing? Do you like something like this? Um, so, just think about your context and be aware of kind of the tools you're using. Uh, you know, Mark Winteringham had a great talk today about tools. These are tools, these are vendors, these are tools. Um, you know, use them wisely. So yeah, and stay classy. This somehow turned into a, a Ron Burgundy themed, I don't know how that happened, um, but hopefully you enjoy that. Um, so yeah, so that's it actually, yeah, I'm, I'm done. Yeah, so thank you very much. Thanks, Josh. Are there any questions? So, uh, do you have any suggestion for AWS or AMI, um, AMI spinning from our thing, like our spinning up EC2 instances and running the scripts? Is there any classic idea? I, I honestly, I don't, I don't have any good suggestions. Like I, 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 it's funny, I have not in my career done that. Um, I've worked with building an internal grid on like actual servers um, that was that hosted in like in our office, um, and we had what well, kind of AWS was really simple. So I don't have a lot of advice um, other than like this, like just think about latency, think about um, that could be a big plus because if you can move things geographically, it could be faster than like using an office shelf service. Um, please close your, your your instances. Please do it. <laughs> um, you know, close your browsers, close your instances, but yeah, otherwise. Yeah. One more question. Uh, so if I, for the latency purposes, if I do it in grid and everything in the cloud, will it be good? I never tried it, so I thought like, it might be a good idea to try it out, like to reduce the latency. We can keep the grid and hub and everything over there, so that might help. So that's my suggestion. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. Other questions? Hi. Um, I started uh, learning more about like containers and everything like that, and there was a new concept of like making your tests or containerizing your tests and sending them to um, a cloud provider. What are your thoughts around that? Yeah, this is an excellent question. So, so this is, it's a, yes, this, this talk is kind of slightly dated in that it uses just kind of the standard client service or a client server um, infrastructure of like the remote. So this is, this is kind of the new kid on the block. This is, this is a good idea. Um, Again, cloud service providers, they're vendors, so maybe they have restrictions or maybe they can't. I don't know, I actually do not know much about this topic. Um, if you're worried about latency, this is a good way to go. Um, obviously, this is like, going to be faster. Um, there's some other benefits too, like if you're into um, non-Selenium technologies like Playwright or whatever. Um, but I, I mean, yeah, I would pursue it if, if you have the appetite for this. Um, Especially like if we have the knowledge of containerization, I guess that's the big blocker is like if you don't have, if you're not comfortable with Docker or containerization um, and you don't need it, like that's a plus for this approach is like you don't need to know any of that period, um, which is nice. It's one less thing you have to worry about. But, but yeah, I, I can tell you for sure um, those, <laughs> those people, those companies that I, I mentioned earlier are, are thinking about this. So I, and again, like I don't, I don't know anything about that, but like they talk to them, they will give you good examples. Yeah, Sauce Labs was telling me about that, so that's why I brought it up. Yeah, I don't know. Sure. <laughs> Thank you. Yep. More questions? Uh, thank you for the session. Uh, we have been uh, using Browser Stack and Sauce Labs for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. Latency is one of the problem, which yes. we try to resolve by creating the uh, 
uh, cloud machines near to the provider locations. That's one, one thing which we try to do it, and we have improved over the period yeah, yeah. of time. Uh, one of the one thing which wa I want to add is uh, all these browser cloud vendors, uh, before you try to call uh, driver.quit, is always a good practice to update the status of the test yes. so that you know you will be able to go back to the <laughs> dashboard and see whether it's failed or whether it's you know passed. So or otherwise you will be looking at it, you won't see any data, you will be just seeing it as timed out. So that would be a good practice to do it before yes. you try to close the driver. Yes, this is an excellent point. Um, I, so I focused on quitting the browser, which is surprisingly important. Um, but you are correct. Um, again, these services just call, they just execute things on, on, the, on the service side. Like, so there's no concept of pass fail. You have to uh, send those in. Maybe that'll change in the future. Like, that's technically a, a feature or a product aspect of these things. But yes, very good practice. Uh, send your test results in. Uh, that could change, I don't know, like, in, I don't know. But yeah, very good point. Yeah. More questions? I had one that might uh, mm -hmm. might be interesting. Have you noticed anything that you need to change inside of your test case when you send it to an external provider? Yeah, that's a good question. There are, so I'm trying to think of something concrete, because I kind of gave some general examples of things that you might have to change. Uh, so so one, is, one is if you're working with file system, definitely, so like that, um, you know, C program files downloads location might not exist on, or if it does, it might be locked down or you have to use this other thing. Um, uh, some of these providers have specific features for like downloading files even. So like that's something you might have to think of. Um, I'm trying to think of something that I saw. Logging maybe, I don't, I don't think so. Um, yeah, but anything working with the file system for sure um, in the tests also are, I don't know, that's a good question. Yeah, but yeah, definitely file systems or anything like uh, OS level. Mm -hmm. So like if you have to, or like Windows registry keys, bleh, you know, like you have to, that's a whole kettle of fish, but like hopefully you don't even have to do that. <laughs> but yeah, those sorts of things, yeah. Anything around like accessing remote resources or things that may yeah. cause trouble with working on the grid? Yeah, this is, um, I don't know if I saw an example of this, but it probably exists where you make a direct service call to an internal service, which again, on an internal grid might make sense. Um, like, oh, like hit this database or hit this API to configure your app or um, you know, pre-populate data or something uh, or reset a database. Um, you can't do that on a Clausarus. Like it doesn't have access to that. It doesn't, or probably it doesn't have access to it. So there, there, and again, there are workarounds. I don't want to get into them, like because they're boring. Um, but like you would, you might want to consider changing those as well, or like um, figuring out a workaround, I guess, in your tests. Yeah. All right. If there are no other questions, then uh, I think we'll break for lunch. Yeah.